Today I'm working on a 1999 Suzuki TL 1000S. Um, what I'm doing today is replacing the rear damper. So back in the 90s, apparently Suzuki had this revolutionary split shock design. So that's a spring on a stick right here. And then they had a separate rotary damper that was affixed right here. Anyways, these old rotary dampers, sorry, we have some work going on. I don't know if it's loud, but these rotary dampers lose their dampening really quick with heat. So for safety <clears throat> and much more stability, I'm putting on a uh, R1 damper with the spring removed. Now I've actually already had one in there, but this one had a leak and unfortunately leaked out to the point where I bottomed out. So I just got another one on eBay, which I'll be putting in there. Got the spring removed on it. This one's in a much better condition. I just have to shave a little bit off of here, like a millimeter to get it to fix into there. So to shave off that little bit, I'm actually using a good old fashioned hand file because I'm trailer trash and don't have all of the tools, but we make do and we have fun with it. So anyways, got this pretty close. We're gonna try to fix it up and see how it looks. I have this bracket, this boomerang like piece of metal that a, uh, a guy on a forum made for me. So, lines up nice in there. Anyway, now we got that in there. It fits and it sits. And I think you can see where this is going. Here we have it, all fixed up. Cuts it real close on fitment, but luckily, these bikes don't have the same rear swing arm travel as like an R1 traditionally would. I think it's literally half is what somebody told me on a forum. So as long as I have the damping settings set up correctly, it shouldn't strike. Again, this is how I've had it before and it did work. Not the best, most ideal setup. Obviously something else would be better but it works for like a hundred bucks, you know?